here at HITS15 in Madrid, we're asking the question, how do you use Y chromosome variation for human identification? So the good thing, of course, with the Y chromosome is that you target the male-specific part of the DNA. So obviously there are, there are lots of forensic cases where this is quite important, namely those where you have a mixed female-male sample. And that usually is the case after rape cases where you take a vaginal swab. And if you do normal STR profiling, obviously what you normally see is a very large signal of the female epithelial cell profile, which of course you know from the reference sample. And that can actually be so large that the male component you cannot analyze. So there are certain tricks people try to use to enrich for the male DNA, but they never work completely fine. So the idea really to target male-specific DNA, Y-chromosome-specific DNA that females don't have, specifically used short tandem repeats, so the same type of markers that are used for DNA profiling, but those on that part of the Y-chromosome which is male-specific. Not sure. all part of the Y-chromosome is useful, but you can work that out and you can then identify short tandem repeats that are as good for individual identification, but then only for males, as the autosomal STRs are for DNA profiling. Yes. So the trouble is obviously that those markers are not individual specific because they are the same in you and in your son, in case you have a son. Right. So what if there would be YSTRs around there that have a much higher rate of natural change? what people call mutation rate. So these are generational mutations? Yes, so there would be a difference in the between the father and the son because there is a mutation. So those markers were not known at the time because the, the, the known YSTRs had a mutation rate of a few mutations every thousand or a couple of thousand generations. That's the reason why usually the father and the son is the same. Yeah. But if there would be YSDRs out there that have a, say, 10 or 100 times higher mutation rate, and if you have enough of those, you should have a chance to differentiate a father and a son. Yeah. So what we did with lots of resources, and actually with the help of live technology, at this time applied biosystems, mm -hmm. we screened about 200 YSDRs, all on the Y chromosome and being male specific, in about 2,000 DNA confirmed father-son pairs to work out how often is a father different. So what we found at the end is 13 out of the 200 YSTRs that had a much higher mutation rate, so about 10 or 20 or 30 times higher. So if you then apply that set of what we called rapidly mutating YSTRs yeah. to 2,000 father-son pairs, and that work was just published in a large consortium, you can differentiate about 20, 30% of the father-sons. So, so, so that is of course uh, an interesting development for the forensic application. So if, if you have a match in the normal YSTR profile using Y-file or using whatever other commercial kit which usually has markers in there that have a normally low mutation rate mm -hmm. and then you want to find out was it really that individual or was it a male relative, you take that set and some of those markers are now in the new generation YSTR kits and you analyze those. And if you still see the match mm -hmm. with these rapidly mutating YSTRs, you can at least have additional evidence or information that indeed it may rather be the same individual. Whereas if you see a difference, it's very clear it's not that male, it's a male Close relative. Close relative. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, okay. Fred. Sure. Really great talk. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm.